just looking for the sports channel, Gary. Today, we're going to talk about machine vision. And we're going to use machine vision to make some music. Let's go. MO5 is an open source library that uses machine vision to control the web. This allows you to do some really cool things like tracking your poses, looking at gestures, uh, identifying images, and doing stuff that's pretty readily accessible for people who just used the web before. I've always wanted to become a DJ, but I don't actually have the equipment to become a DJ. I played around with those apps before, but they only really get you so far. I wanted to be able to make something that was like representative of me. I wanted to be able to have a gesture to move left and right and to be able to control a DJ crossfade as well as to kind of control volume by moving up and down. This could result in some really cool stuff. You could take this to museums, you could take this to shows, you could have it so that people can move their hands and kind of play different songs or mess with the reverb or the delay on functions and stuff like that. Really the sky is the limit. There are a lot of drawbacks to this application though. I've noticed that I have a pretty good GPU and it definitely kicks in when I use this. I don't know if ML5 is optimized for GPU. I haven't done enough research on how that works, but I've noticed some definite slowdown when I've been using it on my MacBook. One thing that might help this is not to use real-time applications. Uh, one of the problems with real-time applications is that a lot of the time the machine has to decide what it's looking at and then actually apply the effects to the thing that you're looking at. So you see this with filters and stuff. Basically a lot of the times that you're using like Spark AR filters or Instagram filters, they're actually pre-processing a little bit and then putting on the, the features. So when you're using machine learning to guess where things are and then applying features on top of that, that costs a lot of computation power and that really just kind of takes away from a lot of the experience. The nice part about this project is that it's actually really, really easy to implement. This shouldn't take that long. Um, if you go through this tutorial, you can pretty much just copy this code. I'll post the code up on GitHub, um, so please feel free to go and check it out if you have any more questions about the kind of like final implementation of it. But thanks to CDN, you don't even really need to install anything. All you need to do is point to the P5 library, the ML5 library, and the P5 sound library. I created a few UI elements to kind of help um, show where things are going um, as well as to kind of help with development, but it kind of doesn't really help for the uh, final product. One thing that you actually do need to do though is hit play for the songs themselves because Chrome doesn't allow you to play songs just on default when you load a web page because it would be really weird if you opened a web page and it started playing, you know, sounds. Wow! So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to set up our HTML file. So basically, we're just going to specify the doc type is HTML. This works for uh, Internet Explorer and browsers like that. Um, in our header, uh, we have a title. Um, I left the default title from the ML5.js. Actually, I didn't even bother to change this. Um, a link in the description below where you can find all these libraries. Um, here we're going to be linking in the scripts for P5 and ML5. So P5 is going to be managing our canvas as well as the sound library that we're going to be using to actually be doing the hand waving for the DJ thing. Um, and then ML5 is the one that is going to be using machine vision. So let's jump into the logic here. So this is our JavaScript file. So we're doing a number of things in this JavaScript file. It's not exactly clean uh, the way that I left the code because I have it doing a few things, but I'll just talk about the important parts. So basically what we're doing here is we're going to set up the variables for the classes. We're setting up the ML5 PoseNet. PoseNet is what tracks the positions of your shoulders, your elbows, wrists, um, your hips, and your, your legs. Uh, we're setting in these actual songs, so we're loading in songs. I don't know if YouTube will allow me to do copyright songs, um, but these are just going to be two songs, um, and then we're going to be modulating their volume using uh, the hand motion. Next, we set up a slider. The slider is actually more for debugging. Uh, I initially used this to test out the uh, P5 sound library for moving the slider value to see if it would change the, the, the song value so we don't really need it anymore. Um, and then these are the play and stop buttons. Uh, so the first thing that we have to do is preload the sounds in. 
The reason for this is because JavaScript does asynchronous loading, um, so you need to be able to have things in before the web page finishes loading, uh, because else it won't be able to find the songs themselves, um, and the whole thing will error out. So we're creating a, uh, um, a canvas that's going to be the entire width and height of the window of our browser. Uh, then we're going to call this setup posenet function, um, and then we're going to create the buttons, and then we're going to initialize the song volumes. So let's go through what each of those are. So in the posenet, we're basically setting up a video. We're creating a capture, which is the webcam, um, and then we're setting it to be 500 pixels by 500 pixels. From there, we're taking the PoseNet algorithm and loading it in, um, which is going to be using um, the MobileNet library, I believe. I'm not exactly sure, um, but there are multiple different models that you can use to train your PoseNet, um, some that are already built in that it just calls from TensorFlow. So we're going to pass in our video, which is the webcam thing, and this is going to be passing in in real time, and this is a callback method. A callback is what happens after a function has finished been calling has been called finished finished yeah that makes sense uh, and then all this does basically is just say that the model is ready um, so every time that it finds a pose which is like a your hands are doing something or it reads where your shoulders and wrists are it will save that to a results um, array and then we hide the video element because basically all we want to do is show the ML5 results which are going to return pictures for us um, and use those as the webcam so we're really feeding in a webcam image you can imagine looking at the pose creating a picture with the pose and then printing that picture out on the web page um, so these parts are pretty complicated but basically uh, when I mentioned you know you're drawing where the shoulder is these are like key points so your key point would be like a left shoulder or right shoulder um, and it basically goes through each of those and then it finds where they are. So basically, the only thing that really needs to be done um, or understood for this part is that we're tracking where the left wrist is and if it's confident that the wrist is, that is the wrist. So basically, again, it's using machine vision, so it's guessing that it thinks it's a wrist. Um, so you can use probability. So I actually have it as a pretty low probability here. Um, so the next thing that we're gonna do is use the set track volumes crossfade method to uh, track the X position from the left, which is 0, 0, to the right, which is 500, um, and then move it left and right, uh, depending on what value it is. Um, and then we are drawing a circle at that point, too, uh, just to give a more visual representation of what's going on. This draw skeleton um, is just a helper function that I got from ML5. We don't really need to look at it. Um, and it's song volumes, so this one sets the song volumes. Uh, remember up here in the setup method, we had the init song volume, so what this does is that that actually just um, initializes the song volumes for us. The slider UI, like I mentioned before, is for debugging purposes. We don't really need it. Uh, these buttons, so with Chrome, you need to start a song by a user gesture, so you can't just like start a song um, by opening up the web page so you have to do uh, create button and you have to have someone physically press something to start playing the music uh, this set the track volumes method is for the why um, we're not really doing that in this uh, tutorial but here basically all that's happening uh, for the crossfade is we're mapping where the x is from like I said 0 to 500 and then we're turning it into a different number so negative 100 to 100 that's what map does it takes something from a range and then turns it into another range so then if it's less than 0 we're going to um, increase the song the volume of the first song and decrease the volume of the second song uh, and if it's uh, above 0 we're going to do the opposite so the second song is going to get louder and the first song is going to get quieter um, and then we're just setting those volumes here. There's the play song and then the stop song. So this is just playing the song and stopping the song. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, the way that I ran it was that I used Python, um, simple server. So what this does is it starts up a simple server on a port, and then you run that, and then you get what you got. So, uh, yep. And that's it for this video. 
You can check me out on Instagram at underscore Bramsies. Um, please let me know if you build anything with this or if you play around with it and have any questions, just reach out to me and contact me either on Instagram or here on YouTube. Um, thanks for watching. I stream sometimes occasionally. Uh, I haven't really been able to stream this because it requires the webcam to be able to do machine vision. Uh, so I haven't really been able to play around with it, but uh, hopefully I'll be streaming again soon and I'll have something worth streaming. And you can find my stream at twitch.tv slash underscore Bramsies. So the same thing as my Instagram. All right, have a great day. Wait, I think it's just twitch.tv slash Bramsies. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching. Have a good one.